All right, in this video, I'm going to show you uh, how to download the guided hacking injector. Really simple, how to inject the DLL if that's all you're looking to learn. I'm going to explain the different methods that the guided hacking injector has uh, to defeat some anti-cheat detections, and then I'm going to show you how to compile it. So first thing you want to do is go to guidedhacking.com slash ghinjector. That's going to bring you to this page. You will want to register on the forum, activate via email, and then you'll be enabled to download attachments. You can download the newest version, you can download the source code, and you can even download some uh, source code with comments from Pastebin. And so once you do that, you'll, uh, you'll extract the zip file and you'll get these executables here. Basically, the ghinjector.exe is a auto it graphical user interface right here. And then once you select everything that you want and your different options, it will then pass the command line parameters to, to one of these executables here. So first thing you want to do is to select your process. You can type in the name of the executable here. You can define a process identifier. You can also use the process picker here, which is really nice. And you can even filter it. So we're going to select our assault cube. Uh, here are the DLL files that you'll be injecting. You click add files, select your DLL, check it, and then hit inject. And so if that's all you want to learn, that's how you inject a DLL. Now, at this point, I'm going to explain some of the different features of the injector and some things down here. You can click this right here and it will update uh, via pinging a, a paste on Pastebin that will find the new version and even download it for you. Uh, help will take you to the forum thread so you can ask any questions that you might have. And changelog opens uh, the changelog on Pastebin and Brohan does that apparently. So. Uh, what's next? Okay, so I just want to explain to you how a basic DLL injector works. A DLL injector in its most basic form uh, uses write process memory to write the DLL path into the memory of the process. Uh, and then it calls create remote thread, which creates a new thread in the target process. And inside that thread, uh, you'll call load library and it, and it maps the DLL into memory. At that point, depending how you've created your DLL, it will then start executing your code. So the, the GH injector has three different DLL loading methods, uh, which are right here. And it also has four different techniques in which to launch uh, those methods. Each one of these offers you a different way of bypassing uh, different anti-cheat detections. First thing you'll notice is that we use uh, NT create thread EX, and the reason is because the create remote thread that we previously talked about, it used to be a universal method for injecting uh, DLLs, but when uh, Windows Vista came out, there was additional security, and basically a create remote thread no longer allows a user process to inject into a system process or a process that is otherwise in a different session. So if you want to inject into a system process, uh, you need to use NT create thread EX, which is an undocumented uh, Windows API function. So what's important here is that NT create thread EX does not care about the process session. So it allows you to basically inject into any uh, basically protected uh, process. So the default method uh, that we have selected here is load library, which we already spoke about. You can uh, find that on MSDN right here. And if you scroll down, you can see that this is exported by kernel 32. Now kernel 32 uh, exports all of the Win32 Win32 API functions. These are the documented functions that Microsoft wants everyone to use. If so if you are an, an anti-cheat, the first thing you would want to do to stop people from injecting their hacks is to hook load library in, in the game process and check for anyone that's calling it. So the first method to bypass that is available in our injector and it's called loader load DLL. Now you can kind of think about a uh, load library as being like a wrapper around loader load DLL. And because eventually in the background, it does call it behind the scenes and you don't see it. Now loader load DLL is a, a native Windows API function 
that is not documented by Microsoft, so you won't find it on MSDN. Now you'll see it's exported by NTDLL, which is what uh, which is exports all of the native uh, Windows functions. Now this is a really nice site called ntinternals.net uh, that that documents a bunch of these undocumented functions. It'll show you the different arguments and it will explain to you the different member variables of the undocumented uh, NT uh, structure. And just to elaborate a little on uh, Windows internals, so here is uh, the kernel 32 which exposes the Win32 API and then basically that all these functions call into NT NTDLL, which exposes your Windows native API functions. So basically, uh, using load or load DLL is a simple way to bypass some detection uh, that might be based on load library. And then you have manual mapping. Now, what manual mapping does is it manually maps the DLL into memory, basically emulating everything that load library does basically load library passes the the path to the DLL to the Windows OS loader and then it does all the work of uh, relocating the sections you know calculating relative offsets and resolving the, the different imports uh, in the import table so uh, manual mapping will bypass any detections based on hooking load library or, or load or load DLL. It also bypasses module detection via walking the modulus in the process environment block, uh, also known as the PEB. So when, when, when load library loads a DLL into memory, it also puts it into the module list. And if you were to use like the tool, help, uh, tool, 32 snapshot thing that will uh, that will basically walk this list for you and pull the information out. You can also walk it yourself uh, if you write the code to do it. So let's go back uh, to the four techniques that allow us to start executing our code in the target process so that we can then launch uh, these three DLL loading methods. Uh, so we talked about NT create thread EX. Now, what if anti-cheat is watching for new thread creation somehow? Uh, the next thing you would want to do to bypass that is to use thread hijacking. Now, basically what thread hijacking does, uh, I'll actually pull up the source code here. Uh, so uh, it finds a thread to hijack, suspends the thread, and it then updates some shell code. Uh, for that thread, it includes the like the DLL name we want to inject, and it copies that into the target process. And then we redirect the thread to the shell code using set thread context, and then we resume the thread. It's eff effectively just changing the flow of execution straight to your shell code that you. Now I, I should mention that uh, this injector was made for guided hacking by uh, Brohan, who is a really good coder and a really cool guy back to the source code so everything that's done here you know it's all in the sort in the source code you can read it basically we're getting the process id we are creating a snapshot of all the threads uh we then loop through the threads find the correct thread that we want to target open the thread we suspend it and we're going to get the thread context allocate some memory presumably for our uh, shellcode to be injected uh, this is where he generates the shellcode and then we write the shellcode into memory into our code cave uh, and then set the thread context and then at that point we've directed redirected flow from that thread to our shellcode and then we resume the thread now, after uh, thread hijacking, if for some reason you know that has some sort of detection mechanism, you have the next thing, which is set Windows hook key X. And what that is used to do, uh, we can actually look that function up on MSDN. It's basically for hooking uh, Win procedure messages uh, that you can see here in the window procedure, like if you write a Win32 uh, project you'll have the different uh, Windows messages that get sent to it and get processed through the Windows procedure. And so set Windows hook EX can place a hook on any 
on any one of those functions for a target window. And as uh, Brohan says here, you know, this can be abused by registering a hook that loads a DLL into the target process. Now, the most common usage for this is for like key, key loggers or for like logging or, or injecting your own uh, keystrokes or mouse movements. So first thing you do is you find a window uh, and it's owning the thread that owns it. Uh, in the target process, you allocate memory, generate your shell code, and write it in. You register your hook using set windows hook ex, and you then uh, you trigger your hook uh, by sending the message uh, that you hooked. So first thing he does, enumerate through all the windows, find the window for the target process, uh, allocate some memory for our shell code. We generate the shell code here write it into the target process. We then register our hook, and in this case, he's uh, hooking get message. Then we're selecting the window, and we're sending a message to it, and that's going to trigger uh, that hook there, and then it's gonna load our DLL. When the hook is finished, uh, we can remove the hook at that point, because our DLL is injected. The next one we have here is a Q user APC. So Q, Q user APC, uh, we can look that up on MSDN, and it basically it queues a user mode asynchronous procedure call. If you look that up, it tells you an asynchronous procedure call is a function that executes asynchronously in the context of a particular thread. So you queue your APC, and then a software interrupt is executed, and then the next time the thread is scheduled, it will then run that APC function. So Brohan explains it. We're going to loop through all the threads, register the user APC in all threads of the target process, and then just wait for one of the threads to, to hit the, the user APC and for our shell code to get executed. Again, we get the process ID, loop through all the threads. So we loop through all the threads here, and then in each one of them we, do, we call QUSERAPC. Okay, so this while loop here basically detects if the function has finished or not, and when it does, it then returns. Now there's a couple other things the injector can do. Post injection, uh, you can keep the process header, you can erase it, or you can uh, fake it. So anti-cheats, uh, they could use a detection like a signature based on your header, or they can just scan for headers. It's pretty easy to find them in memory to scan for MZ, and then you found one. It doesn't matter what method you use, you can unlink uh, from the PEB, the process environment block. So if they're using like tool help 32 snapshot, or if they're just manually uh, walking that linked list of modules, uh, you can remove it from there and hide. Now, if you select manual mapping, uh, you're not going to be unlinking from the PEB because we never even put you in the PEB. Um, because it does not emulate that feature of the Windows OS loader. The other thing you can do is you can shift the module. What this does is it shifts the location of the module in memory, uh, because typically when you allocate memory for a DLL, it's in a four kilobyte aligned page of memory. So an anti-cheat can easily abuse that by scanning every uh, page of memory, or maybe even only new pages of memory, and then scanning, uh, checking for unknown PE headers at that first byte. So shift module will move the module uh, a random number of bytes uh, so that you can hide from that. In most cases, that's kind of just like a gimmick, and erasing the PE header or faking it is a much better solution. Now, this this next technique, a clean data directories, I'll be honest, I don't know a whole lot about it, actually. Um, but here's the code for it. Basically, what, what it does is it removes uh, the name reference uh, for the DLL. So I believe that this, this name thing is a pointer or an offset to the location of the DLL name in memory. And then down here, the thunkref pointers uh, will point to, they point to the function names or the ordinal number. So they, an anti-cheat could detect your hack by using the name of the DLL or perhaps uh, the name of one of your functions. The last feature that I haven't uh, said anything about is uh, hide from debugger. So if you're at, using NT create thread EX, you can select hide from debugger. So basically, uh, in the code, when you call the NT create thread EX, uh, there's flags you can set. 
and he sets it right here. And uh, if you go to definition, the, this flag is, is four, and then that's going to hide your thread from the debugger. You can you can set a delay if you want, uh, which you can use in conjunction with auto and close after injection. So let's say uh, the injector is detected, but your DLL isn't. Uh, you can set a small delay and set auto. So the second your game is found, it'll automatically inject and then close the process, uh, close the guided hacking injector immediately. And so maybe that will inject before the anti-cheat uh, gets started. So that might be helpful as well. So uh, guided hacking injector, uh, big props to Brohan for making it. It's really, it's really good. Uh, I don't think you'll be disappointed if you download it and try it out. I think it has a few more features than some other popular injectors. Um, I will show you if you download it, uh, the source code here, you can compile it. It's pretty easy. You just open the solution and right away you can go ahead and compile it. You can compile it in the x86 and in the x64 version and that will create those uh, command line utilities. Now. If we go up a directory, we have the, the GUI folder, which the, this is an auto it script that's compiled into an executable. And you can go to auto it script.com and you can download it and install it. And if you do that, then you can basically just open up main and go to tools, uh, compile and build. And that will build your executable, which is right here. So then basically you will put uh, the two command line utilities and this executable in the same folder and then you'll have your own version if you want to edit the injector at all. Also I'll just mention that currently the main executable is uh, packed uh, with UPX uh, in case you're wondering. If you're looking to learn more about some undocu undocumented uh, Windows API functions, uh, this source is really good. Brohan's a much better coder than I am and uh, there's some really interesting stuff in here, so I think you should really check it out. All right, that's the end of the video. I hope you found the information useful. Big shout out to Brohan for making the injector and to everyone really at Guided Hacking for making it a really fun place. Uh, please like, subscribe, and share this video, and I hope to see you all on the forum. Peace.